Okay guys, it's finally time to learn how to play the Pierce defense against the burn variation and a lot of you have been telling me how difficult it's been for you to play against it but if we do this right, by the end of this lesson you're going to know exactly what to do and you're actually going to be looking forward to your next game against this variation. And the first thing that I have to say is something that I know is very obvious and you're gonna be like, oh of course, but guys, the reason why you're getting in trouble when you play against this variation is because you're not familiar with it. And what I mean by this is that when you play the pitch defense, a lot of what we have learned has been about getting the main ideas. If you understand the main ideas, just like in the Kings Indian defense, you're going to be able to get to the middle game and be fine. Now, when you see bishop g5, first of all, it's a little bit intimidating if you have never seen it before, but then after bishop g5, let's say that the first time that I played it, guys, I said, okay, bishop g5, not a big deal. Bishop g7 is the move that I typically do here. But then when you see variations like pawn to f4, if you have never seen this before, it's going to be overwhelming and you're going to be like, I don't know what to do here. I'm already lost. I don't know what to do with my pieces. But guys, the moment that we go over it, the moment that you start seeing it, then this is not going to be a problem anymore. Before we get started, a few things to get straight. Number one, I'm going to be giving you guys all of these notes. Like if you look here on the right, all of this is what we're going to be covering. Well, like I did when we covered uh, the Kings Indian defense versus the Averback, I'm going to be giving you access to all of this. So at the end of the video, you're going to see how you can access it. So all you have to do is go through these notes and make sure that you remember the ideas that we explained in this lesson. Or what you need to know, and we're going to try to keep this organized, but what you need to know from here is what to do if the white pieces do pawn to e5. And by the way, this one is already equal for, for white and black. There's, there's not much here for them unless you don't know what to do, unless you get yourself in trouble. You also have to know what to do if they do queen d2. And you have to know what to do if they do pawn f4, which by the way, guys, it looks intimidating, but it's not a big deal. This is not even as effective as the Austrian attack without the bishop on g5. And you're going to see how this bishop here is going to be problematic for the white pieces. So anyways, let's get started from the beginning. And here we go. So e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, pawn to g6, bishop g5. And now you know when they play the burned variation, we're going to do bishop g7 right away. Now guys, a good way for me to remember is that whenever I see that bishop getting away from the queen side, guys, I understand the queen side is going to be weaker, even the center, because the bishop is not even going to the center, it's going to the king side. So I know that for the most part, I'm going to be expanding on the queen side. So this might be a way for you to remember the plans in these variations. After bishop g7, let's talk, guys, about the first variation, which is pawn to e5. Now, right here, I was going to give you just one option, but I was talking to a student of mine who's also a very good friend, and he told me that he did not like the variation that I was going to tell you. So I figured that might be the case for a lot of you as well. So I'm going to teach you both. And of course, you're going to pick only one. Now, guys, after e5, one line that I use a lot, and I use them both, and I'm going to tell you when I use which, but the first one is simply taking on e5. And this is what a lot of people playing the burn want you to do. They think that once we take, we're going to be in trouble. There's a little trick here that they're just fishing for it, and if you fall for it, that's the way you're going to get in trouble. Now, after the pawn takes, it is our inclination to just take on the one, and then we get in trouble. Guys, that's what you should not do. But the other variation is doing something that we learned in the Austrian attack. When they do e5, I know that the first time we talked about the Peters, we learned that this pawn comes here to take. But hey, in the Austrian, we saw this knight just going back to d7. And then if they take, we take back, and we're going to be castling. We're going to get a very comfortable position. I mean, they could do, I think the main variation is f4. But again, you're going to see it's very easy to play against it. I'm going to go over d takes e5 quickly, and I'm going to tell you when I use this one and when I use the other one. You don't have to play them both. You should just, for now, pick one, keep it, and then little by little you add the other one if you feel like it. 
Now, guys, this is the idea. After they take back, instead of taking the queen, you're going to go knight g4 right away. Now, all of you should be familiar with this idea. Now we have two pawns attacking e5. Now, a lot of people don't like this because after the white pieces take, king d8, then we're going to be with the king in the center. We can knack castle. They could even go rook d1 and put you in check. Now, guys, uh, those of you asking, castling with a tempo it's not that ideal because then f2 is going to be hanging right so you're going to say that this check is not a big deal and then they're going to be left with this problem so you could still get oops sorry let me actually erase that because if not you're going to be getting it in the notes you know what now that this happened let me tell you guys because you should know how to use this so if you do a move if you're doing this um if you do a move that you need to erase you just click on it right click and then delete and it's going to go away when you're going over these nodes notice that i'm using the arrows on my keyboard if i go to the right it's going to show me here two options guys pay attention to these things because this means there's one, more than one variation so now they could do rook d1 or knight d5 so pay attention to this because that's the only way for you to know that there is other variation now before we go into them let me tell you something quickly this variation even though it looks weird the king is in the center there are two things about it number one you guys are going to learn more chess like you're going to know how to play with the king in the center you're going to feel more comfortable with it this is just experience that you're getting and you're going to see in the game that i'm going to show you that if you understand the main ideas you're never going to get in trouble and it's very cool to play a game like this a lot of people your opponents are going to be like ha i left this king in the center uh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing i already got him in trouble he blundered and I'm telling you this because many times after I finish my game, I talk to my opponent and they're like, oh, I had you, your king was in the center, all of these ideas, only to realize that all of this is theory, I already had it prepared from home. So anyways, don't, don't let this uh, stop you from playing this variation. Don't feel it's too weird. Now, there's one argument, actually two arguments that could prevent you from playing it, but I'm going to address in a few minutes. So anyways... As you can see here, two variations. Let me click on knight d5. Well, as you're going to see, they're putting pressure on e7. But don't forget, we're putting pressure on e5. So we just need to take care of this. And then they need to deal with e5. One thing quickly. I told you before that bishop, this bishop on g5 could be problematic for the white pieces. And this is what makes this, um, these positions where they get the pawn on e5 very intimidating is going to make it okay for us because typically and this is the, the first idea in the burn that you're going to remember when the pawn is on e5 the bishop is on g5 we're going to be doing f6 many times we're going to be doing f6 and since we're hitting that bishop uh, as well they have to typically take or let us take on e5 but anyways after knight d5 you're going to see that we have knight c6 again taking care of that uh, of that pawn and only after we're going to be putting pressure on this guy now let me go back quickly here if they do rook d1 automatically i know whenever they put me in check here whenever there's trouble on this file i'm going to do bishop d7 so i'm telling you this now because in this variation with knight d5 i go knight c6 logical move to defend e7 and then when they go rook d1 look there's problem on the d file i'm just going to put my bishop on d7 that's it. From here, look, let me just show you a little bit more. Pawn to f4, protecting the pawn, they have to. And now, this is these are my ideas. Number one, I know that f6 is customary here to break this tension. They have to take, I take back. And then, the e file is open for me to put pressure on them. Also, when they do f4, then my knight could occupy e3. And you're actually going to see this in my game. And then guys, lastly, the things that I remember is that at some point, when things get a little bit weird, I just move my king away from this pin. That's it. If you remember this, you're going to be fine. Now, I told you there are two arguments you could use to not play this. And the first one is that if you don't get the burn often, you might forget this thing. So you might get in trouble. I think the other one is a little bit more natural. So maybe that's one of the reasons why you go with the other one. I myself, as you're going to see in the game that I'm going to show you, I just happen to play them both. Now, the other argument, you're going to see it in a moment. Let me just continue 
So h6, the bishop goes back, and then there's another idea here that is common in this plan. And I was telling this friend of mine about this variation the other day. We were like, oh yeah, yeah, when you get to this position, there is this plan where you go pawn to g5. Now again, this pawn on a5, along with the bishop, they allow you to do this. g5, and the idea is that when this pawn is deflected, we could take on e5. So you, you're going to go pawn takes, pawn takes, and now you could pick up on e5, or you could do knight takes h2. And guys, from here, if I activate the engine, notice how the engine is giving us negative 1.5. That means the black pieces are better in this position. So anyways, let me go back. And just to show you, again, remember you're going to have all of these nodes, you're going to have access to them. So don't worry about taking notes or trying to, to write down everything. So let me just go back here and let's talk quickly about rook d1. Well, you already know any trouble down the d file. We have bishop d7. Oop, let me remove the evaluation. So bishop d7. And guys, look, this is 0 0.1. So if I activate the engine, if I go back, uh, the moment they do, uh, let me put this back. The moment they do pony 5 look, it's negative 0.2. This doesn't mean that we're winning or anything like that. This is almost nothing, but it's not like the white pieces are any better. We just need to know what to do. So anyways, let me turn this off and we're going to take, take knight g4, let them take. It looks really bad for us, but you know now it's not a big deal. So rook d1, bishop d7, problem solved. Now from here, they could do so many things, but again, you're going to have access to this. Look, if I look to the right now, there are three things they could do. Now, if I pick this one, then pawn takes. And by the way, they do e6 because now they're doubling up our pawns. This is called a positional sacrifice. So they sacrifice the pawn to get our pawn structure destroyed. It's going to be very comfortable for them to attack us now. So they don't have to worry about the pawn being captured. Instead, now we have to worry about it. So if they go bishop c4, then look, this is the, the other idea that we talked about. Whenever I see this is getting problematic, like they want to take on e6 because of the pin, well, I move out of the way. That's it. Problem solved. Guys, the biggest thing to remember is that since the queens were traded, there are no queens on the board, our king in the center is going to be fine. So anyways, after king e8, knight f3, knight c6, developing my pieces quickly, castle, knight e5, fork. So they have to do something about it. And... The less pieces there are on the board, the harder it is for them to get me in trouble. I'm up a pawn. I mean, double pawn isolated, but I'm up a pawn. So anyways, uh, they take, take back, bishop b3, knight f7 hitting the bishop, bishop f4, knight d6, rook e1. And now bishop takes c3, getting them also double pawns isolated. So their pawn structure is not that good either. Now you are about to see the other argument that you could use not to play this variation. After rook f8, bishop goes back, rook d8, take, take, they got the pawn back, knight f5, we get to this endgame. Guys, the biggest factor for me to play one or the other has to do with my opponent's strength. Like if I'm playing in a tournament, I'm playing someone who is 1700, 1800, I do not want to play this variation because if I lose that game, I'm going to lose a lot of rating. And I don't mean to sound arrogant or anything, but if I'm playing a 1700, 1800 player, I'm supposed to defeat them. And this position, as you can see, is pretty difficult to, to win it, to prove anything as the black pieces. So I don't want to get here with a 1700 player who, by the way, guys, when they get these positions against me, they do not make any mistakes. They're going to play as if they were grandmasters. So I could perfectly see myself getting a draw out of this, even if my opponent is not as experienced as I am. So... That's why sometimes if I'm playing someone stronger, I don't mind playing this, but I'm going to be okay with a draw. Now, if I'm playing someone that I really need to defeat, then I'm going to be playing the other variation where I just move the knight back. Now, another thing is, regardless of my opponent's strength, if I'm playing a game that is decisive, I really need the point, I might go for something where the pieces are on the board. So anyways, let me go all the way back. And we have d6, d4, knight f6. I see three g6 guys at this point of the lesson we're talking about e5 right this early push now we already talked about taking what if instead we go knight f to d7 notice that we keep the queens on the board the game could be a little bit trickier now after knight f to d7 you're going to see down here they could do f4 this is the main line 
or they could do e takes d6. Now, if f4, you guys see the same pattern. The bishop is on g5, the pawn is on e5, so guess what? We're going to castle, break with f6, and if they take, we take with our e pawn, and our rook is going to be able to attack that king. So I'm going to castle, then bishop c4. Now, this is the only thing that could get you in trouble. This bishop here, along with the pawn on e6, that's not what we want. So, how do we deal with this? Well, we're going to do knight to c6. So, after knight c6, this is the idea. We're going to go after that bishop, guys. Now, two things they could do here, knight f3 and pawn e6. Pawn e6, you might not even find it on any books, but I put it in here, guys, for you to know, because I know this is one of those moves that you're like, okay, he did not explain it. My opponent could do it. I could see him doing it. Well, I'm going to go over it with you quickly. I'm going to leave it in the notes, that way you have access to it. The main line is knight f3, just developing their pieces, and this is the plan. We're going to go after this very annoying bishop. So what do we do? Well, this knight, by the way, guys, let me go back here. Um, when you decide to do knight d7, one thing to keep in mind, this is temporary. The knight is not, is not going to stay here for too long. So anyways, after f4, we're going to do, well, let me put this away. We're going to castle, bishop c4, knight c6. Now, knight f3, we're going to go after the bishop. How? Well, this knight is not going to stay here for too long. So we go knight b6 and then knight a5. All of these to go after that bishop. Now, let me show you how the game could continue. So they castle, we take the bishop, of course, they take, and now we're going to do the move that is typical here. And you guys should know it by now. If not, you're not paying attention. So anyways, the move is this tool here. I feel like I'm getting a little bit squeezed and I need more space. So I'm going to do F6. That's your move. That's the move that is going to liberate your position. So they take, we take, bishop f4. And now guys, look at this. All we need to do at some point is, of course, we have to develop the bishop, but eventually you're going to be moving this pawn to f5 and you're going to have a very powerful bishop that is going to be acting on this diagonal. And you're going to see it later, but when you compare this bishop from g7 to this bishop, your bishop is going to be better because his pawns in the center are on dark squares just like the bishop. So now that we talked about this, the plan should be pretty easy. If I know that's going to be the case, I want to fix this pawn on a dark square. f5 is going to be fixing this one, so I'm going to do d5. Then 91 happened in one game, and the idea is that they don't want us to trade the bishop and then do a 5 of course, when we move the queen. Anyways, 91, in this game, they did pawn to c6, knight d3, queen c7, just improving my queen, getting away from this pin, and now after king h1, just being prophylactic, we have bishop f5, and guys, there's no rush to put the pawn on f5, if we do that right now, we're blocking our own bishop, so let's try to trade it. If they did g4, happy to trade the bishop for the knight, then we could do f5. But in this game, they just went um, knight c5, getting away from that. And now if I activate this, uh, the engine, look, it's negative 0.5. Again, it doesn't mean that we're winning, but we're certainly in a good position. Notice how they're giving here h5, and the idea is that we're not going to expand on the king side. You should know this is not how we do it. But the idea is that we don't want them to do g4 and kick us out, at least not for now. So you don't have to do h5, but just know it is an idea. All right, guys, so that's going to cover this variation of removing the knight. You should have the main ideas there. There are only a couple of things that we haven't gone over. Number one, um, over here. Yeah, so after knight c6, what if they do pawn e6? Well, very simple. Don't forget, we want to get that bishop. So if we take right now, forget about getting the bishop. So what we do is we go after the bishop, knight b6. If they go back, knight a5. Now, of course, they're going to take here with a check. That's okay, we move the king out of the way, and now the bishop is attacked, the pawn is going to fall. If they go back, now you don't even have to go knight a5, because remember, they did not do knight f3. So now we could take on d4, so if the bishop goes to b3, knight d4 not only gets a pawn, but we're going to eliminate the bishop anyways. So what you could see is, again, after pawn e6, we go after the bishop, then they're going to take, and we simply move the king. We're hitting the bishop, we're still putting pressure on f7, and we're also attacking d4. All of that because they not developed the knight. So if they go here, then we go knight d4, and guys, again, we're going to eliminate the bishop, we're going to eliminate the pawn. Like if they do knight f3, bishop is gone, rook takes f7, we should be fine here. Now, let me go back 
And the other thing that we have left in this variation is what if instead of doing pawn to f4, so again, we go back here, they do e5, knight f to d7, what if instead of doing f4, what if they go over here and they do e takes d6? Well, guys, we cannot take with the e pawn, it's pinned, so we're going to take with the c pawn. And this looks a lot, well, not a lot, but it looks like the, the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. Notice that the pawn is not on the C file. So it's like if you had done C5 in the first move and then traded that pawn. So you get this kind of dragon setup. And this is very interesting because you're already learning about other openings. Guys, soon we're going to be learning how to play the Sicilian defense. So it's good that you start hearing about it. Now, after uh, we take on D6, then they could do knight f3, we castle, bishop e2, knight f6, very important guys this knight on d7 is just temporary so we're gonna put it back to f6 castle and from here this is a very comfortable game if i just go to the engine look plus 0.2 again is a very comfortable position and guys if you're doing this on lee chess and you activate the engine let's say you you get to this position i'm gonna leave it here you want to know more take a look at what the engine recommends you could do h6 like let's say i just do knight c6 look it's saying 0.6 maybe you don't like i mean this is still fine but maybe you don't like it you could look at other options or if you like it now look the engine is saying oh they could do d5 this is something that i might encounter in a game let me see how the engine reacts you see so d5 and so on so maybe this is not the best example but just know that you could use the engine to don't try to memorize this up to move number 30 because it's not it's not what you should do it doesn't make any sense but use the engine just to maybe recommend or give you an idea of what your opponent could do once the variation is over anyways let me go back here because i really wanted to address one thing here um after again going back they do e5 if we just go knight f to d7 takes takes if they did queen to d2 let me put this down uh some people might just do this guys remember a lot of people play this without knowing much about it they just want to be aggressive castle to the queen side well i wanted to talk about this because i could see people trying to do this against you just know that if that's the case you're going to have like you have in many cases of the the dragon sicilian you have the c file for your rooks to put pressure on that king if the king castles to that side again this knight is gonna be here only temporarily so you could bring it back to f6 to help on the king side you're going to be fine just try to what i like to do is bring the knight back to um f6 quickly and you should be fine like let's say i just go not, actually let me let me do this let's say i activate the engine look the engine is saying knight f6 it's also saying um it's also saying queen a5 and we know this from our lesson on the 150 attack sometimes the queen comes over to put pressure on the queen side but if we do knight f6 let me see what else they give okay so you see h3 well let's say they just go and they castle well you might hear castle as well you're going to be fine and again, I'm looking for something really weird. No one is going to do this, but let's say they go h4. The easiest thing you could do is h5, problem solved. Then you're going to focus on attacking on the queen side. Now, if I activate this again, look, negative 0.1. This is a very equal position. The engine is giving uh, bishop c4, bishop d3, king b1. Nothing too crazy. If they did something like f3, I'm still looking for something crazy they could do. Well, look, knight c6, knight d7, queen a5. So I'm going to do knight c6. Let's say they try to do something like maybe g4. Well, queen a5. So they don't really care about that because if the pawn takes, then we could take with the knight. Everything is safe. And if they try to do something like bishop takes, we take back, then we take with the queen and not a big deal. Guys, again, uh, 0.3 we should be fine here if they did something like bishop e2 maybe well oh we're putting pressure on d4 so they cannot even do that so something else to be concerned with for themselves just know that this is already move number 14 this is just playing chess if you don't feel comfortable with these positions you shouldn't be learning openings you should be learning more middle game okay so uh again guys sorry that i'm just getting away from the main lines and everything else but i really can see people doing this so it's good that you are prepared. So I'm going to leave these notes that I just put here. And that way you have access to this. It might never happen, but it might give you an idea. All right, guys. So at this point in the lesson, this is already, I know it's been long me talking about just this e5 push. Let me eliminate this. d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, burn variation, bishop g7, e5. Okay, at this point, you guys should know what variation you feel like you like the most. I know that you haven't had the chance to play them or to really look into them but you should know just by what you saw 
If you're more of the kind of player who likes to do d takes e5 and then knight g4, let them trade queens, then the rook could come to the check, bishop d7, or you should know if you like uh, the other variation where you just bring the knight to d7. Now, what I like to do with a lot of my students whenever we're learning an opening, so from here, you could be trying to visualize everything that we went over. So when, you, when you're doing this at home, try to imagine the pieces moving. Okay, if I take, then pawn takes, knight g4, queen takes, like go over all of this without moving the pieces. Maybe you don't get far, but you're practicing your visualization skills and you're trying to see if you actually remember the line. So again, uh, this might be unnecessary information, but just giving you some ideas for you to get the most out of this opening sky. So anyways, at this point, you should know clearly what variation you like. So there are a couple of things that I need from you right now. I need you to, if you need to pause the video, pause the video, but I need you to number one, write down in the comments what variation you like the most. Guys, a lot of you have been doing this consistently. This is already lesson number 96. I know a lot of you very well by now. And the point is that I'm basing my future lessons on what you guys are telling me, that feedback. So a lot of the lessons have been planned on the people who are giving me feedback. Like this specific request is because in the future, I'm going to be showing you games that I have played, that I have found in books. And I want to see if I should show you more games of the variation with knight of 27 or the variation where pawn takes pawn. So let me know. It only takes a second. And while you're at it, guys, if you're liking what you see so far, like the video. It really helps the channel. Subscribe. And of course, feel free to share the video with someone that you think might benefit from it. So assuming that you took the time to let me know in the comments. Now let's continue on to the next variation. Okay, so if your opponent has already tried this against you, it didn't work, the next time they play you, they might try queen d2. Or to be honest, if you're playing someone a little bit stronger, you're going to see them playing queen d2, you're going to see them playing pawn to f4. Now, let's talk about queen d2 for a moment. Guys, this is not that different from what we learned in the 150 attack. When we talked about all of these attacks, castling to the queen side, well, a lot of people just do that. They do the burn because it seems aggressive. It could get their opponents confused for whatever reason they might do it. And then they do queen d2 followed by maybe bishop a6 or f3. They castle to the queen side. Anyways, the same ideas that we learned in lesson number 70. So. I'm not going to even go into it. If you haven't, please go back to lesson number 70 and learn how to play against the 150 attack. Now, for those of you who already went over it, guys, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to treat it the same. Thing. And this move in this variation is actually pretty cool because I've been telling you in the King's Indian defense, the Peters, we want to keep things consistent, guys. So if we already do c6 against the 150 attack, well, anytime I see this, as a matter of fact, Anytime, and I've told you this before, anytime that I see they develop the queen side before the king side, I take it as an indication they're going to do that aggressive plan of castling to the queen side and then expanding. So whenever I see something weird, something that is not a classical, I just go pawn to c6. And again, it's consistent and we know what to do already from lesson number 69. Now, if you don't feel like it, you could look into h6. That's perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure there's a very good reason why this is the most popular variation. Even though, guys, many of these lines against the Peters is about that. Whatever the elite players are doing at the moment, they become more popular, but it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. So anyways, um, after c6, see here how the white pieces could do f4. They could do castling. They could do knight f3, they could do bishop h6. So again, you're going to have access to all of these, but let's go over them quickly. Now, f4 is a line that, by the way, if I go back, you're going to see that in this variation where they do f4, when you look at these nodes, I only put this c6, queen d2, castle, castle, and then b5, and I left it there. The reason being is that we're going to go over all of these in the other variation with queen d2. It's just it transposes. So it's the same thing as doing queen d2 first and then f4. So if we go back, if you don't see anything under f4, it's because you're going to see it under queen d2, then c6, and then f4. Now, after f4, we're just going to castle to the king side, then bishop d3, b5. Guys, don't forget, we're going to be expanding on the queen side. At the moment, it doesn't make sense to expand on the king side. The center, we're going to mine it with e5 and c5 later. For now, we're going to do b5. Now, b5 not only is allowing us to continue to expand where the king might castle, but also keep in mind in any line of the pitters where you have the pawn on b5, this before at the right moment could be a very good move. So keep that in mind. 
Now, after b4, we have, they could do knight f3, e5, a3. Now, if they did knight f3, the main line, we just go bishop g4, and then queen b6. Notice how we're putting pressure on the d4 pawn. So if they're not careful, we're going to take on f3, followed by queen takes d4 with a check. But in this game that I'm showing you a few moves off, they do knight e2, then c5. Notice how we expand on the queen side. We cannot just stay there waiting for them to do something. And we're not doing it to attack the king. There's no king, but we need to gain space. We need to create something on that side. So right now, we're ready to trap that bishop. And that's why they do pawn to e5, opening up this, attacking the knight. So from here, the next move is going to be pawn to d5. This is already move number 12. It doesn't mean that you have to do this. It doesn't mean that you have to know this by heart. I've been playing this for a lot of years and no one gets to these positions. They just get lost. Many people just know bishop g5, queen d2, and then castle to the queen side or to the king side. But it's not like they know this by heart. Like I've told you so many times, when they play e4 as the first move, they need to know how to play against the Sicilian, the French, the Carrocan, and they don't really pay attention too much about the pieces. If they do, then they're not going to know every little variation like we do. So all of this information that you have here is for you to review it so that you get some experience with it. So maybe in 10 months, you play this position and you're going to be like, huh, I remember that at some point I saw something where they do this or they do that. So it's just for you to have some information to help your intuition guide you through these games anyways after d5 remember we don't care if they take on f6 so look we have it here if they took then pawn takes i'm attacking this bishop and i'm about to trap the other bishop so they could do bishop h4 and then c4 and the bishop is trapped so you get your material back now the main line guys what you see a lot at the top level is after e5 d5 you're going to see people doing pawn to c3 and then from here we just go knight e4 again really complicated position a little bit tricky not what we're used to but it's just for you guys to get some experience with it to get more information if i activate the engine notice that it says is 0 0.5 0 0.4 so it's not not a big deal now the the game that i have here a few more moves just for you guys to see queen e3 then pawn takes pawn takes knight g5 pawn g5 then develop the knight finally uh, h3 we eliminate the knight they take and at this point if i show you again look negative 0.1 it's all about trying to break on f6 so you could do something like rook a to e8 trying to do f6 and then when those files are open your rooks are in very good position or you could do knight b4 that way the queen could help you with that f6 push but again this is move number 17 this is way into the middle game now let me go back here all the way and let's say, guys, that after queen d2, they do f4, then we castle, bishop d3, then b5. And then instead of doing knight f3, where we just go after the knight, then queen b6, instead of doing that, I just put this in here to give you more idea. If they do e5 themselves, remember that I told you what we do with this pawn on b5? Well, this is that right time that I mentioned before. So here you could do pawn to b4. If they move away, then we do knight d5. The knight is centralized, protecting b4. And any attempts to attack that knight, well, we could do en passant, we should be fine. Now, what if instead they take on f6? Then we take on c3, hitting that queen. And after queen takes c3, of course, we take on f6, hitting the bishop, and we're opening up the file to attack that king and if i activate this now you're gonna see negative 0.9 look it even got all the way to negative 1.1 so this has to be better for for the black pieces now just to make sure that we don't leave anything here oh right here after b5 again if they just go knight f3 we have bishop g4 followed by queen b6 if instead they do e5 themselves, we're going to do b4. And then if they did something like a3, and I just put this here, guys, for you to see, if they do nothing, then you could just do h6, kicking the bishop out, and then we do pawn to e5. So you could even break on e5 sometimes. Now, maybe this is something that you never remember, but again, guys, it's just for you to get more information and it's going to help you navigate these positions. So as you go over this on your own, you're going to see pawn takes, pawn takes, if they just castle, then knight b to d7, queen e7, and you get to this position where after a5, you're definitely close to attacking that king. And if you're not comfortable with this opposite side castling attacks, you can go back to lesson number 58 all the way, I want to say, to lesson number 62, 63, where 
we had like four or five lessons on opposite side castling attack. Now, before we move on, let me just go back here because after e5, I know that they could have done f takes e5 and then we have this move knight e4. So this is something else to keep an eye out for, more ideas for you to be familiar with. And then here, of course, we're hitting the queen, hitting the bishop. If they take our queen, then we're going to take their queen. If they take the knight, then we take on the eight. If they do instead queen f4, well, we could do knight g5, let's say knight e4, then knight d7, putting pressure on e5. And even if they win a pawn on, on g5, you're going to be winning one on e5. Not to mention, guys, the most important thing is the king is in the center. So again, if I activate the evaluation, look, negative point, well, point 0.9, almost negative 1. And this has to be way better for the black pieces. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go back all the way. And for the last time, just to make sure that we covered everything, uh, we're playing the pit's defense. If they go into the burn variation, then we're going to do bishop g7 because we want to take back on f6 with the bishop. That's not going to be the case. No one takes there, but it's a good way for you guys to remember it. And we're going to be open to expanding on the queen side since they don't have that bishop on the queen side or in the center. So after bishop g5, bishop g7, they could do e5. By now, you should know if you're going to play pawn takes or knight d7. And they could also do after bishop g7, they could do f4. We're going to do c6. And then queen d2 transposes into the variation that starts with queen d2. If they go knight f3, guys, the same thing. We're going to castle. It typically transposes into the same thing. If the queen is on d2 or not, it's, gonna make, it's not going to make a big difference. You have these ideas of b5, bishop g4. Now, if instead they do queen d2 first, we're going to treat it as what we learned in a 150 attack. So we do c6. And if f4, then we're just going to castle. And guys, from here, we already know what to do. Again, if the knight goes to f3, the bishop g4, uh, we have ideas with b5. Now, I know this is a very long lesson. I'm already tired. I can feel it. But I really wanted you to learn how to play against the burn the right way. So, guys, don't forget to let me know in the comments. I really want to know how you feel. I want to know what variations you picked. And like I said before, based on your feedback, I'm going to be planning future lessons. Also, it's really rewarding to see that you're finding this useful. If it's not the case, let me know as well. Because again, all of that information helps me help you. So with that said, I'll talk to you guys in the comments and I'll see you next time.